Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Andrew Chrysler teaching EE3325 at Idaho State University. In this video, I'm going to cover how to solve question 5.10 in Fundamentals of Applied Electromagnetics by Ulibi. This problem involves looking at a sheet of uh, conductive sheet with a current on it and finding an expression for the magnetic field at a given point. So I will be showing you how to solve this problem using a uh, standard method that's a bit different than uh, some other solutions. So let's take a look at the problem. So the problem says an infinitely long thin conducting sheet defined over the space uh, from zero to W in the X direction and from minus infinity to infinity in the Y direction is carrying a uniform surface current density given as this. So we have a surface current density. We can see that that's uh, in amps per meters and it's in the positive Y direction. So we want to obtain an expression for the magnetic field at point P in Cartesian coordinates. So first let's take a look and let's define a system for our, our problem. Okay, so step one uh, for solving this using the cookbook method is to define an origin to your coordinate system. Okay, so this is the step one is define an origin to the coordinate system. And so we're going to define that origin uh, right here, right? This is zero, zero, zero. <clears throat> we can see that the sheet is in this space and in the x direction it goes from here x0 to some distance x is equal to w and this sheet of charge stretches all the way from minus infinity to infinity and we can say right that this is all in the positive y direction okay so this whole current the surface current JS is five amps per meter in this positive Y direction. All right, so next let's write a vector RS, okay, from the origin to the source current location. All right, so <clears throat> we will make this vector RS from the origin to the source current location. And so when we do this, right, we will, <clears throat> say the RS in the X direction, right? We have it going some X amount. In the Y direction, we have it in some variable Y amount, but in the Z direction, right? We have nothing. So this goes along with here, right? So from the origin to any source on this plane, right? Our current, right? It can be anywhere along here. So if I want to draw a point, right? It goes in X and Y. So I have written a vector RS that goes from the origin to the source current location. Now let's write a vector RP. Okay, and this goes from the origin to the point location. The point location will be the location where we are interested in finding that field. And in the problem statement, right, we are told we want to find the field at zero, zero, Z. So let's write this vector RP. <clears throat> so in the X direction, if we want to go from the origin to the point of interest, right, we have nothing in the X or the Y, but in the Z direction, we do have a direction. So we want to go to ZP and we will leave it as this ZP in order to remind ourselves that we do not want to integrate using this ZP variable. All right, now let's make a vector using both of these. Okay, this vector RSP, we'll combine what, the other vectors that we just made <clears throat> to draw this. And we have RSP which is RP minus RS, which will give us minus X minus Y in the Y direction. And in the Z direction, we have plus ZP. Now for step five, let's write a unit vector 
Okay, and this unit vector, we will use uh, the RSP vector that we just wrote. So we'll find the unit vector of RSP. So using this vector that we just wrote, <clears throat> we now want to find the RSP. Okay, so RSP is going to be <clears throat> the vector RSP that we just found. And then the magnitude of that vector in the denominator. Now for step six, let's consider finding this vector that we're going to call II. Okay. And we'll use this table to determine what this vector is going to be. So first, when we look at this, right, we need to ask ourselves, is this going to be uh, a line surface or a volume current? Well, if we go back to the problem, right, we see an infinitely long thin conducting sheet. So thin conducting sheet, that leads us to believe, right, that it's a sheet. So we're not gonna be looking at a line current. It's also not a volume. And then also we have this other hint, right, that we have, we were given that the current was uh, JS. So it's, it is a surface current. So we have a surface current. So this vector we know is JS DS. Okay. And so we have the knowledge of JS already, which is given as uh, in the Y direction as five amps per meter. Okay, and so then we need to determine what ds is going to be, all right, and so we can determine ds by asking ourselves if we move around right on this sheet, right, if we move around on this sheet of charge somewhere around here, right, what is changing as we move around on this surface, and right, and I can see as I go this way, right, we are changing in the x direction, and when we go this way, you're changing in the y direction. So our ds is going to be uh, dx dy. Okay, so we have this. Great, so moving right along, let's go and find the cross product of this vector with RSP. So we have two vectors that we've just determined, RSP and vector II. So let's find the cross product of, of this. And this cross product, right, this is going to tell us the direction that we have the um, field, the magnetic field in, okay. So let's set this up. So the vector that we just found, II, right? We have, it, it is contained in just one direction, the Y direction. So we have zero, five dx, dy, and zero in the Z direction. Whereas this vector RSP, which we found up here, right, does have minus X minus Y, ZP. So solving this, finding this cross product, we get 5ZP dx dy in the y direction. We don't have anything. And in the z direction, I get 5dx, oops, 5x dx dy. Okay, so almost there. Now we have, we've found the cross product, which gives us the direction. So we now need to set up a differential expression 
uh, for the magnetic field. So we should find a differential expression for the magnetic field now. So don't forget, right, the entire point of this is that we want to find an expression for the magnetic field. And so the re the, all of the steps that we've done so far uh, lead us up to writing this expression here. This, this method that I've described here, this cookbook method, where we walk through these simple things, you can probably, if you're clever, you can probably notice these right away, but this method will help you to uh, solve any problem that has any type of line current, surface current, or volume current, right? So in order to find the expression for that magnetic field, right, eventually you're going to need to know, right, what this, the current direction crossed with this RSP direction is. And so this set of steps walks you through this in order to find this cross product, which gives you this information. So we now have this differential expression, right? So pl plugging in all of the values for everything that we've done so far, we get dH is equal to this. And if we were to write in this and uh, change this from a differential expression um, and work towards solving this by integrating both sides. What we want to do is set up an integral like this, okay? Set up an integral that solves both sides. And I will go ahead and do this now. So in the x direction, we have 1 over 4 pi. And then for this full integral, I have 5zp <clears throat> dx dy. Now I need to come up with integration limits for this. And so in the X direction, right, we should go from the start of the current to the end of the current. And I can go back to this initial figure and see that the current starts at X equals zero and goes up to X equals W. And then in the Y direction, likewise, we can see that the current you could say starts at minus infinity and goes all the way to positive infinity. So I arrive at these integration limits. And then, as you might guess, right from this, we are going to have a very similar expression for the z, only lacking this zp term, and then instead having this x term. So the same 1 over 4 pi constant in the front. The limits are going to be the same because the current exists in the same place. And then this part of the numerator does change from the x direction. Now recall when you do this integration, right? We did not end up having limits. We did not end up having a, a um, apologize, a, a dz term. We only have dx dy, but again, remember that we have written this as zp. In the event that we had a dz term, we would remember we do not want to integrate over this point, right? This point is that point that's that's not changing. This is the point of interest in the z that we were asked to find the magnetic field at. So if, if your situation is different, recall that we left this as zp in order to give us a small reminder about what not to integrate. All right, so there you have it. This is the uh, an expression for the magnetic field. Okay. This is an integral integral expression. As you can see, it's somewhat complicated. We can't actually solve this integral though. 
And I will show that to you in another video.